Hey guys, today we're back with another gun video, and today we'll be talking about the top 10 best firearms for the zombie apocalypse, in my opinion. Uh, I'm a real big fan of The Walking Dead, uh, Z Nation, and other zombie TV shows and movies, and uh, I'd like to just put my opinion out on what I think will be the top 10 firearms to have in the zombie apocalypse scenario. So, uh, that's about it. Let's start the video. <laughs> Alright, hi guys, we're back. Um, first gun on this list will be the AK-47. As all y'all know, this is uh, pretty much probably one of the more uh, popular uh, assault rifles of uh, modern history. Uh, the pros of this weapon is that it's very reliable. Ammo is not really scarce, but it's not abundant. Uh, you can get high capacity magazines, uh, 10, 20, 30, up to 40, 50, 60, even I've seen a 100 round banana mag. Uh, somewhat accurate up to about 200, 300 yards. Uh, it has plenty of stopping power, it's a tumbling bullet. Uh, they're easy to disassemble and clean, so that makes them more reliable pretty much than them. Uh, the cons is going it's very loud, so it would attract zombies a lot easier. Uh, there's not really many accessories that you can put on them that would help uh, fight off zombies besides maybe a scope attachment or something. Uh, ammo is pretty expensive, so stocking up on good ammo will be hard. Uh, you can get cheaper uh, steel ammo, but it would not really be the best uh, for your weapon. Um, and like some uh, ammo, like as a toll ammo, the steel cased ammo, it could make the gun unreliable. Um, and like I said earlier, I guess uh, another con would be that only really accurate up 200, 300 uh, yards. All right, coming in at number nine is the good old 1911. Uh, 1911, 45 ACP, seven to eight round mags, been around since the year 1911, designed by John Moses Browning. Uh, pros of this gun is that uh, they're overall pretty reliable. Uh, ammo is abundant, 45 ACP. Uh, the parts are abundant for it, so if you uh, break maybe a, uh, a, part, or a a slide release or a safety, you can get a part for it really easily. Uh, the gun is simply put together and simple to take apart. Uh, mags are abundant. You can put a threaded barrel and a silencer on it. Uh, just drop in if it's just got the bushing, uh, bushing barrel. Uh, uh, they're very accurate. I love 1911. They've got plenty of stopping power with a 45 ACP round. Um, and they can be cheap. Some of them run four, uh, 400 to 600 to seven, eight, nine hundred dollars but on the other side, big con, they can be expensive too. Uh, some of them can run up over $1,000, $1,500, and if you're looking at a Wilson Combat, you're looking about around uh, $3,000 to $6,000, depending on what kind of get. Um, ammo is somewhat expensive, about $20 to $25 a box, so it'd be harder to stock up on this kind of ammo. Uh, you got kind of low capacity with only seven to eight round mags. You can get extended 10 round mags, but it sticks out of the gun a little bit. The 45 can have a lot of recoil if you're not a bigger person. And uh, 45 all around is just a real ear splitting round if you don't have a silencer on it. So moving on up, we have the Ruger 1022. The pros of this gun is that it can be, it can, it can kill zombies in some universes. Um, in the Walking Dead universe season three, a zombie was killed with a 22 pistol, so that means a rifle, which would make it have more power, uh, should easily kill a zombie. But in some other zombie movies and TV series, a 22 would just ricochet off its head and not kill it. Um, ammo is abundant. You can carry thousands of rounds for the 1022 in your backpack and it wouldn't weigh you down. Uh, ammo for the gun is very cheap. 100 rounds of real good ammo for like $7, so that, that's killer. They're accurate up to a certain distance, and uh, you can get 25 round mags, 50 round mags for the 1022 Ruger. Uh, con is that uh, you could possibly not kill a zombie, as I said earlier. Uh, Ramfire ammo is actually really, really dirty. It's not got a primer, so if it shoots and it doesn't, uh, it, you don't clean it very often, it will hang, uh, and it can cause a gun to jam whenever you really need it. Uh, 
Some mags are also unreliable, such as Butler Creek, but Ruger's made new mags for them that are very reliable, still lips, if you know what I'm not, if you know about the 1022, you know what I'm talking about. So, oh yeah, and the gun is very cheap. You can get a 1022 Ruger brand new for better than $200. Number seven, the Benelli M4. This is 12 gauge shotgun used by US military and many law enforcement agencies around the country. Uh, the pros of this gun is that it's very reliable, automatic, 12 gauge, uh, semi-automatic, not bad. Got to make sure we say semi-automatic in the YouTube world. Uh, 12 gauge shotgun, it can shoot 12 gauge, two and three fours and three inch if I'm not mistaken. Ammo is abundant for 12 gauge and uh, scattered shots. You can hit uh, many zombies at one time. The cons of this gun is it's very loud, very heavy, very expensive. It's starting out at about around $2,000. Um, and less reliable than a pump shotgun, so that's why it's that high up on the list. Number six, we got the Winchester Model 70 or the Remington Model 700. The pros of this gun is that it's got very long range, accurate, and you can use the scope as binocular. Um, they're very reliable, bolt action, and uh, depending on what kind of uh, ammo you get for it, you can shoot over a thousand rounds or what, whatever, just depending on what kind of uh, what kind of uh, gun it's made for, or ammo it's made for, my bad. Uh, cons is going to be heavy to carry around all day. Uh, the ammo is expensive, no matter what kind of you what kind of caliber you get the gun in. It's a uh, very loud scope can be knocked out of sight if you dropped if you drop it and um, That'd be about it. And also, too, if you've got like the stainless versions, it can reflect and show your position. Uh, and these guns can somewhat be expensive, about around $700 for a decent one. So that's something to take into consideration. Uh, in the fifth uh, spot, we have the Smith & Wesson TR8357 Magnum. This is eight shot revolver made by Smith & Wesson for SWAT teams and riot control. Uh, the pros is that it's eight shot 357 Magnum. Uh, very reliable, very accurate. I have one on my channel. If you'd like to see it, just go ahead and find it. Uh, or I'll leave it in the space below. It doesn't matter. Um, it can shoot 357 Magnum or 38 Special. So that's two different calibers that you can shoot in one gun. Uh, it's got a tack rail on top for sights. It's got a tack rail on bottom for lights, lasers, or I've even seen a, uh, a knife on one. That's pretty interesting. A bayonet, I guess you could say. Uh, Ammo is abundant, like I said, but uh, cons is that it's very loud. 357 Magnum has got a little bit deaf in you. It, you. Zombies will hear from all around and they'll come in on your area. Uh, 38 Special will dirty the weapon because it's a shorter case than what it's made for. Uh, slow reloads if you don't have moon clips or uh, moon clips or uh, quick reloaders. And uh, if the timing goes out of the gun, uh, you're screwed. Because if you don't know how to work on the timing, that's pretty much a uh, paperweight. Uh, in the fourth spot, we got the FNX TAC 45. Pros of this gun is ammo is very abundant, silencer ready, and ammo is subsonic. So uh, if you put a silencer on it, that'd be the best gun to possibly have. Um, it's red dot. You can, most of some come with red dots. Uh, they're standard 13 round magazines, and for 45, that's killer. Uh, got a killer stopping power. But the cons of this gun is that it's very expensive, starting out $1,200 just for the gun, not the not the red dot or the silencer or anything else. Uh, 45 is also very loud without a silencer, as we covered with the 1911. And uh, this gun right here would possibly be number one if it wasn't for the cost. So you're starting out $1,200 for the gun, say $200 for an ATF tax down for the silencer, background checks and all that, and um, an Osprey, uh, Osprey silencer running about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars. I ain't really checked on much, but you've got the you pretty much see what I'm talking about. So you're looking about around twenty five hundred dollars. Oh yeah, and then the red dot on top would be about two fifty to three hundred. So all in all, after you spend all that gas and everything, you're looking about three thousand dollars into this weapon. So that's probably why I've, I've got it in fourth place. In third place, you got the AR fifteen. Uh, Pros this gun is ammo is abundant. It can shoot 223 or 556 times 45. Uh, accessories for this is abundant. I probably say this gun you can put more accessories on it than any other rifle or pistol ever made. Um, you can also use a sniper rifle. Uh, 223 556 times 45 can shoot up to probably 700 rounds accurately with a good scope. Uh, very reliable. 
Uh, mag capacity is huge. You can get uh, 10 round, 20 round, 30 round, 40 round, 50 round drum, 60 round drum, or 100 round drum. Uh, oh yeah, and some AR-15s are cheap, about around starting five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. Uh, cons is that they can be unreliable if not clean. They're harder to fully take apart and clean, and they can also be very expensive. Like my code AR-15 6720 was twelve hundred dollars when I bought it three years ago. Or, no, not three years ago, about six years ago, actually. Six to five. Uh, so, there's a big one right there. Any kind of cold or any kind of higher up AR-15 is going to be easily over thousands to two thousand dollars, depending on the brand. So, that's uh, it would be harder to get a really nice one, just because of the price. In second place, we got the Remington 870 Mossberg 590. The pros of this gun is ammo is abundant. Once again, 12 gauge shotgun holds up to about six without the plug in the gun, plus one in the chamber, seven. Uh, very reliable. Uh, so many accessories for both of these guns. They're scattered guns because they're shotguns. Uh, they can shoot 12 gauge, uh, three, two and three fourths, and three inch. And some of them, even, even the Magnum ones, can shoot the three and a half inch shells. And plus, they're very cheap starting around. Uh, about four hundred dollars, four hundred, five hundred dollars, depending on what you can find. Uh, the only con of this gun, in my opinion, is that it's not as quick as the semi-automatic, and it can be heavy. It could be heavy if you're carrying around all day. So, going on to the final one, winner is the Glock 17. The pros of this gun is that you can find ammo all over the place, nine millimeter. It's probably the most used uh, pistol cartridge in the United States. Um, the ammo's abundant, mags are abundant, you can find Glock mags in any gun store you go to. If your gun store doesn't have a Glock mag, then it's not a gun store. Uh, one of the most reliable handguns, if not the most reliable handgun of all time, in my opinion, I don't want to get some hate over this, but in my opinion, the Glock is probably the most reliable handgun of all time, just because of how simple it is. Um, simple to take apart, clean, and put back together really quickly. Uh, and they're cheap, starting around five hundred and thirty-nine dollars out the door before, or no, before tax. My bad. About five seventy-one, if I ain't mistaken, state of Kentucky after tax. Uh, but the cons of this gun, the only one that I can find that I can think of is that it doesn't have a good trigger without a trigger job or a uh, ghost dropping trigger, and uh, the cheaper magazines are really unreliable. Uh, so that can possibly make your gun jam. All right. And uh, just before we leave right here, I've got three honorable mentions. I've got the Scar H308 caliber. Uh, the pros of this gun is that it's 308. It can travel long distances, and you can also have a good home defense, uh, house defense gun. Uh, very accurate, high capacity, starting out 25 rounds in a magazine, I believe. And you can find plenty of accessories for them. But the cons that it's heavy. The barrel is shorter than a hunt rifle, so you're not going to get as good as range and accuracy out of the thing. They're very loud, 308s by deafening. Uh, ammo is very expensive, starting around $20 uh, for a box of 20, if I'm not mistaken. The last time I checked, I ain't checked in a while, that's about right for the state of Kentucky. And probably the worst one, the gun is starting out right at $3,000. So, not many people can afford this gun. Uh, next up we have the 9mm carbine. The pros of this gun is that it's very, uh, it can be cheap. Uh, the ammo's cheap, 9mm very controllable, you can shoot rapid and it, and it won't jump with you. It's good for very close quarters combat and up to some medium ranges. The cons is that it's very bad at long range. Uh, you're using a pistol caliber. Uh, they can be expensive, running a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, depending if you have a Colt Wilson combat or whatever. Uh, and they have less uh, knockdown power than other guns that you can get in that size, being a 223 or 556. Um, but one thing I forgot to say about the pro of this gun is that you could carry the Glock 17 on your hip and this in your hands and switch out and they use both the same mags. Most of them do. Okay, and the final one is the Colt Python. Um, the pro of this gun is that you can shoot 38 or 357 Magnum. Ammo is once again abundant, abundant and probably the biggest pro is that you'll look like Rick Grimes in The Walking Dead in the zombie apocalypse scenario. Uh, but the cons of this gun over, over, uh, overloads the pros by far because it's very loud, only holds six rounds, heavy. Uh, timing can mess up with a hefty diet of 357 Magnum. Uh, you've got very slow reloads. And uh, probably the biggest one is that you can't find these really at a gun shop. Uh, 
the cold hasn't made them since 1996, I believe. And uh, if you find one, you're going to be looking to pay, like on the low end, two thousand dollars up to the high end, about around six to eight, depending if you find the uh, Python Elite stainless. So uh, that'll be the end of the video, guys. What do you think about it? Uh, if, once again, if you'd like to see the uh, full video, I'll be uploading it very soon with in detail that I went in that I went in detail further with every single one of these guns. So uh, let me th uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this uh, new top ten uh, thing on my channel, I'll start doing them more often. Uh, if you don't, tell me why. But if you do, like, subscribe, and uh, appreciate y'all watching this. So. I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>